Welcome everyone to the first uh, of 2024 market and economic wraps. So we're uh, wrapping up January 2024. I'm joined by Jeremy McPhail, Head of Investments at FMD Financial. Jeremy, uh, market records in Australia and the US this month. Mm -hmm. It was, yeah, yeah. So uh, we started the year off with a bang. Um, certainly the, uh, the US and Australia have seen that and, and carries on from the uh, run that we saw from November and December last year. Uh, Magnificent Seven in the US is still performing relatively strongly. Uh, domestically here, uh, the um, sectors that performed well, uh, stopped up, uh, real estate and technology that have uh, come out of the blocks running re relatively well. Yeah, great. <coughs> bonds? Uh, bonds are pretty flat in, the, in start to end of the month. Uh, there was a bit, a bit of a blip through the month with markets seeing some new data points come through that showed a a stronger economy and, and expectations that rates may need to or may not drop as quickly as what they're expecting. Okay. What about uh, uh, other markets? Yeah, so em emerging markets is another one of note. Uh, China specifically is still lagging and, and hitting five year lows there. Um, there's expectation that there'll be some stimulus coming through from the, the governments uh, to, to prop the, the economy up there. Capital flows is interesting there that I still think there's a, a concern around. Um, uh, regulation in those markets and, and hesitance from, from uh, developed market investors deploying money into the Chinese markets, which until that changes, I think we're, we're probably in a, a phase where that's challenging the, the Chinese markets. And what did the Aussie dollar do over the month? Yeah, again, relatively flat. So January is normally a bit of a benign month. So uh, it started around 68, it ended at about 66, um, and really down on the expectations that probably the US uh, interest rates will remain a little bit higher than what was expected. Okay. Um, economic indicators then, Australia, inflation? Yeah, so inflation uh, that came out yesterday and was lower than expected. So I think that's the consumer starting to be a little bit cautious with what they're spending on and some rollover effects. So as we know, uh, stuff that comes out of, you know, you're looking at a 12 month number. So stuff that was in there last year has rolled out and, and uh, we roll into the new period. So. Um, petrol prices were lower. Um, I think food and vegetable prices are, were lower as well. Uh, housing is still a challenge there, um, as we know, with interest rates that have risen so much here and the flow-on effect that's quite quick into the, the, the consumer, or into the property markets, if you yeah. like. Uh, and the, the immigration that's been significant here as well, which is crimping the, the rental market and making it really difficult to, to find a, a property at a reasonable price. Yeah. And is that leading into the retail sales slump? Yeah, it, interest rates certainly have, I think, yep. um, that we've seen uh, such a, a big rise in, in rates. We were basically zero almost at this time last year. Um, now at, what is it, 4.35 or, or whatever it is. Mm. Um, that, that's, in Australia, the transmission mechanism is quick. It's a six, 12 to 18 month process to have interest rates impact, um, but it certainly hits in and, and people are starting to, to tighten up on, on what they're spending on. Yeah. And uh, the Albanese government announced their yeah. stage three tax cut changes. Yeah, yeah, so probably not unexpected with cost of living with, with where it's at. Um, there's some logical um, reasoning behind what they're doing and, and certainly does get a, a bit more money into the consumer's pockets that are really filling the, the cost of living punch. Um, and those higher income earners will continue to see bracket creep for, for the foreseeable future if this continues to come in. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't really have the benefit of cleaning up the tax system no, that we'd no. hope the old tax three, but it does. That's right. And, and the, maybe the, it's a bit more egalitarian. Yes, yes. yes. And, and uh, yeah, there's, there's got to be a bit more political wherewithal, I think, to, to, to take on what some are seeking is greater um, deregulation of the tax or, or greater restructure of the tax system. Yeah. Great. And um, what's the outlook? If we move on, what's yeah, the outlook? Yeah, so I mean, February um, reporting season from a company perspective, so that's going to be one that's interesting to watch, um, always is. Um, I think the expectation, you probably see companies largely muddle through, but if there's companies that, that do surprise either to the upside or downside, you do start to see a bit more company-specific volatility through that period of time. Given we've had a pretty good run over the last couple of months, I don't think you're going to see any sort of big spike in the market through this period of time. So it'd be more company specific. Uh, from an economic data point, uh, you'll see the RBA that meets next week. Uh, they're now on their new um, six monthly 
reporting cycle or, or announcement and, and review cycle. So that'll be something that'll be a bit different as will be their announcement cycle as well. So post the meeting, not only will they do the announcement, they'll actually do a media conference. So we'll get a little bit more color around what the, the economic data is that they're looking at. They're really looking at an, an employment and inflation still. So they'll still be top of mind. And, and my view is um, inflation's, while it's coming down, there's still cause for concern with the employment market, which is very robust at the moment. So they still want to be mindful of, of wage prices and, and wages being under control. And so you're probably not likely, likely to see cuts, which the markets are starting to talk about, not probably until we start to see some further data points later in the year. Okay. And what's the IC thinking about then in relation to those things? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, steady as she goes is probably the, the comment at the moment. Um, it's been great to see some, some rebound in performance. Um, based on uh, the, the rebound in equity markets, which has um, performed really strongly over the last few months. Um, you know, some of those uh, sectors we've talked about, so you know, domestic market, you know, we've got some uh, challenges potentially with the reporting season, so that's you know, something you don't really want to jump into or out of too significantly at this point in time. Uh, we're still very uh, well invested um, uh, offshore as well, so um, not making any real changes there. Opportunities that have sort of arisen over the last little while are uh, um, small and emerging companies yep. uh, and emer emerging markets as well. So uh, while they've lagged other mainstream markets and, and the large and mega cap businesses and more specifically that Magnificent Seven that people have been talking about and, and have sort of seen widely publicised. Mm -hmm. We're looking at the valuation opportunities that, that are out there. So we do have small and mid-cap companies in the portfolios. We think that that's still an opportunity, as is emerging markets, which from a valuation perspective uh, look more attractive. Great. And finally, some interesting news about Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, not um, something that wasn't unexpected, but the SEC in the US have announced that uh, they've approved the, um, uh, the wide issuance of, of ETF securities that are linked to Bitcoin. Uh, so the likes of BlackRock and some of the, the major ETF providers uh, over in the US have been able to launch ETFs that are, are linked to Bitcoin. It probably makes it a little bit more mainstream, but it's probably still on the periphery for us in terms of the, the risk profile that that might introduce. Uh, I, I still don't know how it's classified as an asset class, as some people talk about it in the media. <laughs> yeah, there's no gold standard behind Bitcoin. Not quite. Not yeah. quite. <laughs> Jeremy, thanks very much for joining me this month, and I'll see you again in February. Pleasure.